It's Art Therapy Day on Rain Francis Art. Today we're going to pull out our acrylic paints and we're going to paint this Fall Equinox inspired painting. We're also going to pull a Bob Ross card for inspiration. So let's begin. This is what you'll need for today's painting. I'm using pretty much dollar store supplies here. I'll show you first. I know that everything is very white here, but I have a dollar store canvas here. It's 12 inches by nine inches and I've masking taped it down because I like to have things framed in and also it helps so that it doesn't move. I've never really used one of these dollar store canvases before, so I'm gonna see how that works. I also have some dollar store acrylic paints. It's this one here. What is it called? Deco Art Crafters Acrylic Paint. So I've got all of these are the same uh, brand from the dollar store. I have white, yellow, orange, red, green. I have two types of blue. One is called peacock blue. I think that's peacock blue. And one's called Copenhagen blue. One or the other. And I've got some black here. And I'm going to be keeping that on the side close to me so I know what what to use. I've got some water, some paper towels. I have a whole bunch of brushes here and I will put in the description below, I'll list what I actually end up using. I also have some watercolor pencils. This is optional, but I'm gonna use these to maybe trace out what I wanna do. I thought since we're so close to the uh, fall equinox that I would do a kind of equinox type of painting. And of course, since this is kind of an art therapy day, I've got my Bob Ross playing cards. <laughs> and we're going to pull a card and see what wisdom Bob Ross wants us to uh, keep in mind today. I love cards. Oh, whatever makes you happy, you put it in your world. And isn't that true, my friends, about everything in life? If you're going through a time where you have big decisions to make about people or things in your life that aren't serving you anymore or that are causing you misery or drama or stress. Whatever makes you happy, put it in your world and get rid of what doesn't make you happy. That's the message for today. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to take my yellow and I'm just going to see, you might notice there's some scratch marks on here, but this is going to be the side that's going to be darker, so I don't mind that too much. But basically, I'm going to draw a line right in the center. You might not be able to see it, but it's just for my reference. And if you don't have watercolor pencils, you could always use coloring pencils. I do that to, to uh, sort of sketch out what I want to do. And you don't even have to sketch it out if you feel like you can handle uh, doing it without, you know, sketching things. This is just for fun today, using acrylic paints. I'm going to have the sun over here, so I'm going to kind of outline a bit of a circle here. Wow, that is a good circle, Rain. Usually I'm not good at that. And on this side, I'm actually going to take my light blue pencil because I'm going to have the moon on this side. The equinox is all about um, balance because we've got equal day and night times, right? So I thought I would do kind of a balance type of um, painting and which is interesting because to in order to be balanced in your life you have to remove the no good and bring in the happy so Bob Ross has got my back today <laughs> and now I'm going to take let's see I'll take my yellow again and actually you know what that's all I wanted to sketch that's it just the moon the sun and my reference line here so the first thing I'm going to do is take a paintbrush I just have a flat number two paintbrush here and I'm getting it just slightly wet and I'm going to dip it into my yellow paint. I have to be careful with my yellow because I don't have much left and uh, this goes kind of quickly. But I kind of, I use um, acrylic paints almost like watercolor paints. I use water so I'm just dipping my paintbrush into the water to spread that paint around. I like using the watercolor technique with acrylic paints because I can layer just a little bit, but I find that when I'm doing certain paintings, I like to have um, very vibrant colors and I find that the acrylic paints can sometimes be more vibrant 
and the watercolors. Okay, so I'm just going to leave it like that to dry and then I'm going to go over and do the same thing on my moon. So I'm just uh, cleaning off my brush here. And I'm sorry about the shadows, but I have to be careful when I'm painting. Um, if I have the lights directly on so that there's no shadows, then you can see the glare of the water in the paint and I don't like that. So, all right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into this darker let me see which one this is, just for reference. Okay, so the darker blue is the Copenhagen blue. And I'm drying off my... I have a dry paintbrush. And when I say dry, I just mean it's not soaking wet. And I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm just going to fill in the moon. I've got my pets in the background. Um, my dog, Jack, is snoring. So you might hear that once in a while. They always relax when I'm doing my art videos. I've been told I have a very relaxing voice, so that could be it. All right, so that's the first layer of our moon. The canvas isn't so bad, actually. I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, I'm gonna clear off, clear, clean off my brush. And I wanna take a bigger brush now. Probably like a larger flat brush because I'm gonna do whole areas here. Um, I'm not gonna wet my brush right away, but I think I'm gonna go back into my yellow. And I'm gonna fill in this entire side with yellow, except for I'm going to leave a little halo around my um, around my sun because I don't want my circle to get lost. And I'm not adding water to this. The only thing with dollar store paints is I find they have these little bits in them, you know, they get clumpy. But the price is right. <laughs> the only paints that I really buy at the, at the dollar store are acrylic paints. There's another clumpy piece. I don't cheap out on my watercolors, but I got a little yellow there. Oh, that's all right. We're going to cover that up with blues and maybe some black. Okay, now I'm going to grab some water and just pull that yellow across my canvas. A lot of this is going to be covered with orange and red as well. I'll just add a little more yellow here and some water. There's another clump. actually a nice day today to be painting. It's a little overcast and rainy out there, so I don't mind being inside. Acrylic dries quite quickly, so you see I left a little white around the sun there. It almost looks like a halo. What are they called? Sun dogs, I think. I'm going to leave that as is. Clean up my brush. And I'm going to take that same blue. Actually, I'm going to pull that yellow off there. Yellow and blue makes green, so I don't necessarily want... I just have a clean brush and I'm just pulling it off. And I'll grab a paper towel. Just kind of wipe that off. So I've got my same flat brush here, I'm trying to get all the yellow off it. I, it doesn't have, oh yes, it does have a number. It's a number six flat brush. So I'm going to do the same thing, but I'll start on this side and I'll just put a layer of that blue. This is a very transparent blue, actually. 
doesn't really cover the canvas. I don't mind for the moon because I'm going to be adding different colors there, but well, to the sky as well. But if I had to use this, wanting to use this as a pure color, I might be a little disappointed. <laughs> but I guess that's what's, what layering is for, right? I'm going to try to get that halo around the moon as well. I'm going to be adding white to the moon, I think. Because I don't know if it's going to be a full moon or if I'm going to make it a uh, crescent moon. Because I think actually, if I remember correctly, the current moon is waning. Or is it? No, it's waxing. It's, it's uh, growing into the full moon. So it's waxing. So maybe I'll make it a waxing moon. I don't need to add water to this, that's for sure. Now let me just take a look here. This is kind of dry, so I'll be careful, but I am going to end up putting green into this area, I think. So mixing the blue and the yellow will be okay. And we're going to have a big tree in the middle. There we go. First layer is done. I'm going to clean off my brush. The yellow is not quite dry yet, but that's all right. I'm going to take some of my orange and I want my brush to be as dry as possible. So I'm just off camera here, dabbing it on my paper towel. So here's my orange color. Now let's see. I am going to add some water to that. Actually, I will add quite a bit of water because I want it to be a little more transparent with the yellow. sun to shine, 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 shine. We're just doing this for fun, you know. I love flat brushes when you go around round shapes. They really work well. So I'm, like I said, I'm doing a layer of orange over all of the yellow with plenty of water on my brush. And we are nowhere near done, so don't worry about how it looks right now. You might see your brush strokes. But if you see your brush strokes, you could always say, well, it's an impressionism painting. <laughs> That's a quality of the impressionism style of painting. It's um, visible brush strokes. So if you have visible brush strokes, you can always tell people, I'm trying to capture the Impressionist style of painting, just like Van Gogh. <laughs> no one can argue with that. All right, I'm going to clean off my brush. I always get a little dab of something in there, don't I? Try to remove that little orange bit that's going to make it black. Orange and blue, not good together. All right, there we go. Now, I've got my clean brush again, and it's wet, and I'm going to dip it into red. And I'm just going to add some red kind of all around. That's a very dark red. I'm just dabbing. I might add some yellow to that red because it's quite a dark red. I must get to the dollar store to try to find some different colors. I haven't been in a while. I'll just dab in some yellow there. Not yellow, orange. A little more orange. dog 
is snoring quite loud, isn't he? Can you hear him? <laughs> All right. I'm going to take a different brush right now. I'm going to take, let me see, I'm going to take a round brush. This is a large round brush. I can't tell you what size it is because it wore off over the years, but I'm going to dip that into my red and see what happens. It's quite dark. I'm going to try something. I'm going to take some red and mix it with orange or with yellow. I'll take a clean brush for that. Just grabbing some yellow and I'm going to add it and see how that looks together. Let's mix that up together. Maybe it'll be a brighter red. Well, we could still use it. it. Seems to make it a little more dull, huh? I'm going to have to fix that after and put some more yellow in there. I'm making kind of a texture. I wasn't planning on doing that, but I like it. Because it, it allows you to see underneath. All right, why don't I go ahead and fix that, that sun right now. I'm just, I have a clean brush with a little water. I'm gonna remove that, um, And I'm wiping off my brush on a piece of paper towel after. Just want to get rid of that red. We had such a nice perfect round sun there. So I'm going to just, I had yellow on this brush so I'll just go ahead and put some more yellow in there. There we go. So now I'm just going to take some of that sort of lighter blue that I have which is I guess called peacock blue and I've got my round brush and I'm just going to do the same thing I did with the red over there I'm just going to kind of put little uh, pats of that color here and there I actually like this blue much better than the other one I'm going to try not to disturb my my halo there and I'm not going to put any water. Just going in and pulling some off, some of the blue off. All this down here is going to be black because we're doing silhouetting today. So, yes, I like this blue much better. That's a nicer blue. All right. And now what I'm going to do is take, let's see, why don't I clean off my brush? I like using this round brush. It's nice. I may need to stop and get some more clean water because now I'm going to go into my white and I'm going to add a little bit of white to certain areas of the blue just to make it a little lighter. We're doing plenty of layers, so don't worry. <laughs> this may look funny right now, but it's going to look great, I think. And if it doesn't look great, that's okay too, because we're doing this for a little art therapy today. All right, there we go. Just a little bit of white. And I think that this side needs a little bit of white as well, but I have to clean off my brush first so I don't have any blue in there. Just doing that on the side here. I'll grab some of the white and I'll do the same thing. I'll wipe that off on the side just to make sure I don't have any red or orange on it. And I'm going to put some white in the middle as well. I got some blue on that side. Let's get rid of that. There. just creating layers here. All right, so I'm gonna wipe off my brush. I always say wipe off, clean my brush in the water. 
And what shall I do next? I think what I'm going to do is hmm, take some of that orange and go over certain areas of the white. I'm just creating a background right now. I'm going to put a wash of yellow over everything after on the sun side. But I want to create a nice background and I'm going right into my red color and I'm going to do the same thing. Let's see, probably just a few little spots with the red. Okay, and if I get any into the sun, I'll fix that later when everything's dry. I'm going to clean off my brush now. I'm going to work on the moon side with that same round brush. Now let's see. I was going to put some green in. I'd like to see how that looks. I might regret it, but I'm going to put a little green in and just see how that looks. And I'm going to leave it quite thick. I don't want to blend it into the blue. Don't want it to look muddy. Just to cover that middle area, hopefully for a good transition. I'm just wiping off my brush again so I don't get any blue into that area that's orangey and red. Wiping off my brush back into the green. Okay, that's all I'm doing with the green. I'm going to wipe off my brush again. And I'm going to take the white and put in some more white here. Maybe it'll give the illusion of clouds in the sky. And some more white. Let's see. Why don't I put some more white around here? I have a little blue on my brush, so I'll just clean up my brush a little bit. And there we go. Clean off my brush. And I'm going to go back into that nice peacock blue and maybe put some like this. Maybe into the green too. All right, wiping off my brush. You know why I keep saying wiping off? Because I normally draw with charcoals and I wipe off, <laughs> I wipe off my canvas. Okay, so I'm going to take my little flat brush again, this little flat brush. And it's dry and it's clean. I'm going to take that peacock blue and I'm going to carefully add some peacock blue to my moon. And I think I will make it a crescent moon, so let me see. And I'm going to go over that white area. All right. And I'm going to put a little bit around the entire moon. I'm going to do a wash of white over that after, so 
I want to get rid of that white halo that we had there. I hope my crescent moon is okay. There we go. That's good for starters. <laughs> now I'm just going to take a little bit of water and kind of blend the uh, the edges so they're not so stark. Cleaning off my brush and I'm going to take my white again with my large uh, round brush and just kind of put in some white. There we go. I just stopped the video because I wanted to get some clean water um, in my bowls. So I'm going to now, it's not perfectly, perfectly dry, but I'm going to take a wet brush, my flat brush, and put some yellow in there. And it's going to be a wash that I'm kind of going over everything. And I may have to stop to um, wipe my brush because I don't want to get the red and the white everywhere. Or maybe I do. Hmm, that doesn't look so bad, actually. Just a yellow wash. I do want to be careful around that green, though. I don't want to get any green in. And by wash, I just mean that my yellow is wetter than regular acrylic. You know, regular acrylic is dry, sort of. It's not like watercolor. Let's see how that looks. I'm going to do several washes, I think, to get the color that I want. And we're going to come back and fix that sun, so... My dog's coughing, poor baby. I think the green is dry, so hopefully I can go over it. Yep. And on the side here, I'm just wiping off my brush now and then when I notice that, say, the red appears on the brush. But, you know, I'm not too concerned with down at the bottom because, like I said, it's going to be nice and black with the shadows, not the shadows, the silhouette of grass and the trees are going to be in the middle. Just trying to get some background here. I'm going to put more yellow in. It's kind of blending all those colors together, but they're all there. This is called, um, what you do is a, uh, a background painting. And now I'm going to take some of that orange and just put in, I'm using the tip, just like that. You see? Doing that. Underpainting, that's what it's called, not the background painting. It's called the underpainting, just so you have some layers in there. And I don't know if you're able to see it, but I can still see my, where my sun is. And I'm going to come back in after when this is all dry. And I'm going to outline my sun again. Now I'm going into my red and I'm going to do the same thing. Just add some streaks of red to the sky. Very different, doesn't it? 
All right, now I'm going to sort of do the same thing on this side here. First, I'll start with white, and I'm going to do some streaks of white. Okay, I've got some blue on my paintbrush. Let's get rid of that. I'm going to be careful around the moon, though. And now I'm going to go in with that peacock blue color and kind of do a wash over there. I don't want to cover everything. Okay, I want to clean off my brush because there's some green on it. Ideally, you want to let everything dry before you add layers when it comes to acrylics, but I don't feel like waiting. <laughs> I just want to paint. I don't even care what it looks like. It may end up being an abstract painting. We can say that, you know, if it doesn't turn into anything that we can recognize. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I was doing abstract. cheating though, isn't it? Okay. And again, I'm not too worried about the bottom here, but I'm still going to put some of that blue because there's going to be a tree limb right in the middle. All right, so I've got my brush cleaned, hopefully all the blues off it, and I'm going to go back into my yellow. And I think my sun has probably disappeared, but I'm going to go back into the yellow and just kind of blend everything so it doesn't look like streaks of orange and, and red there. And I am running out of yellow, so I've got to be careful. And I'm going to keep some of those nice bands of color in there. I hope I have some more yellow in the, in the jar. How about we take a little orange? Starting to uh, have more fun now playing with colors. All right. So I think I'm gonna. Hopefully, I have enough. I have to re refill my little yellow pan there. All right. I have some more phew because <laughs> I want to make that sun. I want to put that sun back in. What I can do is I can take the yellow. I have a, a smaller flat brush here and I'll just move my water and I can still see that it was about here. So I'll just put kind of the outline for myself so that I don't lose it and I'll fix it all up later. I'm going to take some white and just fill in the sun for now. Again, like I said, it's just so I don't lose it. I don't want to forget where it is. All right, I think that's is that a lopsided sun, maybe. Yeah, we'll leave it like that for now. Now what I'd like to do is work on the moon a little bit. So, I am going to 
take a small little round brush. This is a number two round brush and I'm going to take some white and I'm going to try not to touch my canvas. And I'm going to outline my crescent moon. Not outline, I'm going to fill it in. With white, I can't, I can't multitask when I'm doing details like this. <laughs> I can't speak and paint at the same time. Or that happens. It's a little too round at the end there. I'm going to pull some off with a dry brush. I may have to put some blue there to cover that up after. I will do that right now. Take some of that, make sure my brush is really dry. Take some of that peacock blue and just of holding my breath too when I'm doing stuff like this. All right, that looks okay. So now I think I have to, I was gonna wait until it dried a bit, but I don't think I have to. I'm gonna take my flat brush again and I'm gonna do more layers of white here. Kind of like I did over here, just putting in layers of white. And then I'll put in more of that peacock blue. I'm just going to rinse off my brush, get some of that blue, and do the same thing. Blend, blend, blend. Be careful around the moon. some streaks of white. You know, when I look at it, I wonder if I really needed to do that whole underpainting, you know? Because the acrylic paint is, it's very, um, opaque, you know, it's not transparent, depending. Okay. So far, so good. I'm pretty happy. Um, this is still wet, so I'm going to wait to finish up the sun. But what I'm going to do is start building my tree. And it's black, so even if the paint is wet, it's okay. It'll cover it. So I've got that same flat brush. And I'm going to very gently start building my tree. There's going to be a big trunk in the middle of the two skies. Okay. And I'm going to make, it's going to come all the way up, but I want it to kind of be a little thinner around the top. Okay, I'm going to add a little more black there, just to make sure it's really dark. Now, 
I'm going to do branches. So I need um, a nice round brush for that. This is a number four round into the black. I don't want it too wet. So I'm going to make my branches come out here. I think that's all right because we're going to put some um, leaves on those trees so I'm going to grab how shall I put those leaves on my big brush here let's see I'll probably come back and do a second layer of the black because my canvas is not quite dry everywhere and it's sort of taking on the um, the yellow a little bit and I'm not making this solid because I want to be able to see the sky through it This is like a Bob Ross style technique of doing leaves. He just taps. I started my painting by doing oils, following all of his tutorials, actually. I have all my paintings that I did, my Bob Ross paintings. I'll do a little There, that's a nice tree, I really like that. While we're here, why don't we do the illusion of grass or brush. And we're gonna make it go up like that. On this side, I wanted to do something more with the sky though. I'm not quite happy with it the way it is. So I'm taking another flat brush and I'm being lazy and taking a new one. It's a number six. You could use the same flat brush that you had before. And I'm going to take that peacock blue again and I'm going to kind of do a blending wash over that. Because I found it looked a little too streaky for my liking. Maybe a little over here too. I've kind of neglected this side here of the moon. Maybe I'll grab a little white. I keep adding more white and then hiding it, huh? More blue. Oh, 
Okay, I think I'm going to stop there. <laughs> there is such a thing as overdoing it. All right, so I'm going to take my little round brush again and I'm going to create some branches on this side. This side is not going to have any leaves on it because it represents the winter, whereas this kind of represents the fall, I guess, or the summer. smaller brush here. This is a, it's my number two brush here. And I'm going to try without getting my hand into the paint. No, I, I might have to wait till it's dry. I just wanted to do little offshoots. No, it's not. Uh, I need an even smaller brush. I do have here this is a number four fine liner brush. I'm going to wet it because it comes to a really, really nice, nice tip. You see? Nice tip there. And I've got a little water here. I want to make kind of like an ink. And I'll try to hold my hand up. No, it's not working too well. I'm usually able to do really fine, fine lines, but here we go. I like seeing the blue through the um, through the branches here. I am really winging this. <laughs> I wasn't really sure what I was doing today, but I just felt like doing some little art therapy because I'm going through a rough patch again. Life always throws you curveballs, eh? Once in a while. But you kind of have to roll with it. I mean, we only go around once, so let's try to make the best of it. And as Bob Ross says, whatever makes you happy, you put it in your world. And this painting is making me happy. I think it needs more up here, and that's where I'm having trouble. I can't rest my hand down. There we go. That's going to look better. Oh. Are you okay, Jack? My little hound dog. <laughs> he just burped. <laughs> I love how innocent dogs are. They don't follow rules of society, do they? They don't create drama. All right, there we go. So, let me see. I just want to take one of the paintbrushes that is, that is dirty here and try to put a few little 
bumps on my tree trunk because no tree trunk is perfectly straight, right? And I'll do that on the other side too. I may not have to, maybe a little. I'm whispering now, aren't I? <laughs> There. And I'll just fill in some black in the middle here. May want to make it come out a little thicker at the bottom. Okay. Now what I'd like to do is make those leaves just a little darker because I really want them to look you know, in, in the silhouette. I want them to look really dark black. one come down a little more on this side too. Make that a little thicker. Okay. Let's darken this up a little too. Now I'm going to do the same thing on this side. and put in a few little lines here. Now this might represent small little bushes that don't have leaves on them anymore maybe. Okay, my tree looks slightly crooked, I think. I'm gonna try to fix that. Hopefully I won't ruin it. There, I think that fixes it a little. I'm gonna grab that fine liner again because I just realized there's something that I missed up here. There we go. Add a few more little branches. Okay. Now with my little blue, I'm going to kind of hide some of those little black dots that I got. Actually, you know what? It doesn't, doesn't hurt to have a little black on there. Why don't I just put a little black in the sky? I'll wipe that off and I'll add blue on top of it and see how that looks. It turns it gray, but that's all right. It's a night sky, right? I think that looks okay. All right, what can I do next? I still have my sun to fix. So let me see if it's dry. I think it's dry. I'm going to go into my yellow. 
and I'm going to try to draw a circle. I may need a lot of paint for this. Let me see if I can draw the, the sun. I want to make it a little less lopsided. <laughs> kind of lopsided. That's all right. I'm going to fix that. Just wiping off my brush and kind of going around, wiping off some of that paint. And what I'll do is I'll grab some orange and I'm going to be very careful not to go anywhere near that black. Some more orange up here. trying to blend it so that there's not too many visible brush strokes. All right, now I can go in, try to fix up my sun, try to make it more round. basic shape here. Okay, so I'm going to grab some orange and just put some around my sun and then I'll blend all that in after. I'm just going to try to blend that with a little bit of water just so it's not too obvious that I put a, an orange band around the sun. And it dried pretty quickly, so. Now what I'm gonna try to do, and I'm gonna try, <laughs> if it doesn't work, I'll fix it. I'm gonna take some white, and I have a little bit of yellow already on my brush, so I'm mixing white and yellow and let's see if I can do this. And if it doesn't look good, I'll just cover it with yellow again. I'm gonna add a little more yellow. Oh, that was a big snore. Did you hear that? <laughs> it's Jack. When he's in a deep sleep, boy, does he snore. My dogs sleep in bed with me, so it's, I've gotten totally used to it. I don't want to ruin my son here. It really looks lopsided. Oh my gosh. I am so bad at circles, and I had it so well done at the beginning. just pure yellow. You know how Bob Ross used to do it? He used to take his finger, he'd put it in paint, and he'd go like this. And that's how he made his moons. And I should have done that from the beginning. <laughs> Let me just wipe my finger off here. All right. Now I'm going to try to put a little bit of that orange around the sun again. I'll 
wipe that off. I have yellow there. Hold on. Putting some yellow back on here. I might come back in with my finger and do that again. We shall leave it at that. <laughs> but I am going to try to just blend around the orange so it doesn't look like I've just, like I said before, that I've just put a band of orange in there. And I might put a little bit of a yellow wash around it. Well, the last thing I want to do is I want to put some stars in the night sky. So I've got some wax paper here. My painting isn't 100% dry, but I'm covering the areas that I don't want to have stars. And if I get stars into these little branches, all I have to do is come back with my black and redo them. So what I've done is I've put some of that white acrylic paint into my palette here and I have put a little bit of water and you kind of have to play with this to get the right consistency. And we'll see as we go. You take your paintbrush and you go like this. I'm not going to do it now because it's going to splash all over my camera. But you just take your finger and you go like that. And you get nice stars in the sky. Here. Let me just move this. I think that looks really nice. But I am going to go back and, with my black, fix that up a little bit. Now, where's my palette? Here we go. With my white finger, <laughs> I actually pulled off some of that yellow, so I'm going to go back in there too. But I am going to put in some black on top of those branches. I have to hold my arm up here. Just where I got, you know, the white dots. And I admit I'm adding more branches as I go here. <laughs> I love doing trees and doing these branches the way Bob Ross used to do them. This is his style of painting here. I really learned a lot by watching his Joy of Painting shows. And they're all free on YouTube, you know. If you look up Bob Ross's channel, all of his painting, Joy of Painting shows are there. And I think his son does some too. And there are guest, uh, guests who do painting lessons as well. It's a great place to start. Oil is fun to paint with. I just find it's very expensive because I personally love to paint with big canvas when I'm using oil paints, but the canvas is expensive. Though I've never tried doing oil painting with the dollar store canvas. I suppose if it's just a study, you know, when I'm learning, I could try doing that. All right, there we go. Now, the last thing I want to do is fix up my sun a little bit. Got that yellow here. There. 
just because I pulled off some from the middle. Okay, so I'm going to pull off my masking tape and reveal my framed masterpiece. <laughs> Well, my friends, something happened to the recording and my camera just stopped recording as I was pulling all the masking tape off. So I'm really sorry about that. But what I did was I pulled all the masking tape off, as you can see, and I noticed that there were some little, uh, there was a little bit of orange and red that was bleeding. So what I did was I just took my little paintbrush and I took some white acrylic and I just painted a little bit of white acrylic on the side there and on the top. And up here too, there was a little bit of yeah, um, orange that was bleeding into the black. So I just put a little black on top just to finish it off so it looks nice. I really, really like this painting. I'm so glad that I decided to do this today. It really felt therapeutic for me. So remember my friends what Bob Ross says, right? Whatever makes you happy, put it in your world. Seriously. And take out whatever doesn't make you happy. I hope you enjoyed this painting lesson today, my friends, and be well. Leave me a comment. I love to read your comments and I do reply to them. And don't forget to like and subscribe. I really love all you guys and I'm so glad that I can interact with you and that uh, I can show you my little techniques. And I hope that my lessons are simple and I hope that you enjoy them. So we'll see you next time on Rain Francis Art. Bye!